Howdy and welcome to another Bevy video. For the past week, I participated in the Bevy Jam number 3, which had the theme side effects. For the jam, I create a platformer where as a player finds medicines to get new jumping abilities, but also get horrible screen distortion effects. The game has 4 levels, and all the art and audio was done by me. It was even my first time trying to create music because the jam had a rule about creating your own audio. So far, the results aren't in, but the early comments don't seem to indicate anything is super broken, and I don't have any bug reports, so I'm happy with what I made. Overall, I think this is one of the best games I've ever made for any jam. As you go through the game, you'll gain a wall jump, and have your character controller change greatly. In the second level, you cross the level one way as a Mario-style character controller, but on your way back you have more of a Meat Boy floaty-style character. I tried to keep the actual level design really easy, and most of the jumps are as simple as hold right and press space. However, the difficulty comes from the fact that you don't know that when playing the first time. And then with the combination of a new nauseating effect, and a new character controller, it can be pretty difficult on your first playthrough. I targeted a 5 minute playtime, and I included a timer in the top right. The timer serves two purposes. First, it encourages people to comment and help give me some data. And second, it's just intrinsically motivating to have a number on screen that you're trying to minimize, and I like how it makes me feel. I can blitz through the game in about 2 minutes, and some people report beating it first try in about 3, so I'm pretty close with my estimated time. Once again, I'm really happy with how this turned out, and the only thing that I would change if I could redo it is to put more time into polishing up the graphics and adding more sound effects. Before we look into the details behind the core systems, let me quickly plug myself. I am actively looking for a job, so if you know anyone who is hiring or have any contacts, please reach out to me on the Discord or in the email linked on my YouTube page. I'm obviously a Rust developer interested in game development, but I also have embedded systems experience in C++ and some Unity experience. I'm looking for anything remote or in Boise, Idaho, and any leads would be greatly appreciated. So now let's jump into some of the details of development. I decided to use Rapier Physics for collisions, and I spent the first day following some Unity tutorials for making a good platformer controller. My inspiration was Cave Story, and my character design is heavily based off that. I opted out of using Coyote Time and Jump Buffering because they didn't seem like there was an elegant way to handle them, and I wanted to have it easier to modify core systems at this point. In hindsight, Coyote Time would have really helped the feel when it's hard to tell if you're even on a platform with some of the effects. Next, I grabbed the bevy example for the post-processing effect, and I added it to my project. All we needed to do was render the entire game to a texture, and then have a second camera look at that texture. Now, I can have shaders that read my ground truth texture, and perform simple fragment shader effects on it, and then the final camera can see the outputs of the post-processing. This let me easily do many different cool effects, and if each layer was transparent, I could stack them. I can even animate the transparency to cause different effects to fade in and out. Basically, all of my effects just modify and rotate the UVs, but in different ways. Chromatic abrasion offsets the different color channels by varying amounts over time. Distortion samples the texture and offsets the UVs according to the red and green values and also changes over time. The spinning effect just rotates the UVs and changes the coloring. It also slowly merges between two different rotations to make it harder to focus on a single reality. Finally, the weird effect samples a very low resolution image and offsets the UVs by varying amounts. All of these effects are super simple and can be toggled on and off because they are just overlay textures, but I think the final result looks pretty compelling. I learned a lot about writing shaders and hopefully I can use these skills to make effects that are a bit more tasteful going forward. I also added some minor graphical effects like smoke particles and stars when you bonk your head, just to give it a touch of polish. With the core graphics done, I moved to making the level design system. Basically, levels have three parts, the actual map, the graphics, and the potion effect. The map is done by a plain text file, which I load into the game and then spawn hitboxes. For performance reasons, I join horizontal hitboxes into a large rectangle, and this also prevents the player from getting stuck on false corners. At the top of the map file, I have a path to the corresponding background. I wanted to do some parallaxing, but I just didn't have time in the last weekend of the jam to get that included. Finally, for the potion effects, I have a player stats loaded from a RON file, 
and each level just needs a RON file associated to the player's new stats after the potion is picked up. Potion pickup and level exiting are handled using Rapier sensor hitboxes, by the way. I wanted the potion to stand out graphically, so it's actually a 3D model I made in Blender, and then I rendered it down to a low resolution image and turned it into a sprite sheet. I think it stands out pretty well and it looks kind of interesting, and it was a lot of fun just to learn some new Blender systems. I also used online tools I'll link in the description to help me make the background track and the sound effect track for jumping. That pretty much covers all of the core systems, and I spent the rest of the week working on the glue to hold everything together. I have four game states, the menu, platforming, cutscenes, and the win state. My menu is super simple and it's just an image, an effect, and the play button. It's not much, but I like having a slightly animated menu. During the cutscenes, I slowly raise the player text up and apply a slight blur over the gameplay. This prevents the player from mashing through the text and skipping what the potion just did to him. Again, it's a pretty simple set of systems, but I think it worked nicely. Platforming is the core state, and here the speedrun timer ticks, and the player is free to play the game. I tried to use a fade out on any jump cuts, so the effects don't just pop in. I might have leaned too heavily on the fades, but I think it looks nicer than just snapping things into existence. The fade comes from my other devlog project, and I modified it to support more customization depending on the situation. I really need to add support for using bevy events with my fade, because the first draft for every system used events, but when I wanted to add the fade, I needed to rewrite them. I think I want a system like Unity Coroutines or something, where I can schedule an event to happen in a few frames so I can play an animation. My final state is a win state, where I just despawn everything and put up a simple background in the player's final time. Overall, the project is about 2,000 lines of code, which isn't bad for a game jam, and for the kind of game that I made. Of course, some things are left janky, and I wouldn't just copy code from this repo, but it's open source and it's linked in the description. I really enjoyed the jam, and I think I managed my time well to not need to crunch on the last weekend, and I made a pretty good game. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons, and thank you for watching.